Just make sure that you are different from the guy sitting left and right of you. I like I like what you said there. I mean, rather than trying to get everyone to become the same person, you're saying be unique, yeah? Yeah. So think about whether you are adding any value and whether you are gaining any experience in your job. You don't think machine learning is going to take it or AI is going to take jobs away in the next five to 10 years, yeah? Well, you know, every time we get new technology, it takes jobs away. Just ask weavers. Supposedly they were breaking up machines in the 18th century because they were taking jobs away or something. So Good I've point. heard. Yeah. So yeah, uh, CLI jockeys will disappear. VLAN masters will disappear. But on the other hand, uh, that has been happening for the last 300 years. Do you have this uh, this feeling that we ran out of jobs? I agree with you. It's it's it sounds like you just have to adapt. Yeah, I mean, we got from half a billion to 10 billions or something and we still have jobs. Yep, good point. So now, uh, yeah, the repeatable jobs will go away. Intelligent jobs not for a long time. So if you're not learning anything new, if you're not gaining any experience, if what you're doing can be described as a decision tree, that job will be gone in a few years. No question about that. So find a job where you're learning, where you're gaining new experience. And if you can't find that job in your current company, start polishing your resume. Ivan, what do you, what do you think are the next big trends? Um, a few years ago, you know, we had OpenFlow. We won't get into that uh, network automation. Before that, we had voice over IP stuff like that. I mean, you've seen many many trends over the years. What do you think is a good trend or trends to look at if you're just starting in, in this industry? So, are there any waves that I can ride if I've just started? For a young person going into you know IT. I would say focus on the cloud. Okay. Because everyone will have to do something with the clouds eventually. And traditional environments will have no idea whatsoever how to do that. What about machine learning AI? What do you think about that? Well, you know, once the current wave of hype dies, it will be useful. Well, it's always been useful, but. So in 1990s, we had this huge hype how AI will save the world and uh, nothing much happened. In the meantime, a lot of people were, you know, hidden from the uh, public work on solving a lot of interesting problems. And so they got to a point where machine learning is useful and it is actually used in certain environments like, I don't know, image recognition, voice recognition, really hard problems that were intractable 10 years ago. And because they solve this particular domains, it's all overhyped now that, yeah, now we can solve everything with machine learning. Well, you can't even solve Amazon hiring problem with machine learning as they proved. <laughs> you can't even write a Twitter bot with machine learning as Microsoft proved. Uh, so it's all overhyped. And on the other hand, you know, everything is artificial intelligence now. And you look at the definition of artificial intelligence, it says uh, literally that, you know, it's when a computer, well, a system behaves like an intelligent being would behave. Something along those lines. Which means that, you know, a decision tree is artificial intelligence. It's a good point, yeah. An if statement is an artificial intelligence. If you say, if it rains, take the umbrella, and yet now you code that in Python, that's artificial intelligence. That's exactly right. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's all totally ridiculous and useless. It doesn't mean that there is no substance there. There is a lot of substance. And if you feel inclined to you know, work on that, if that excites you, go for it. 
Just remember that it's not nearly as rosy as what you read on Facebook. So do you think it'll, uh, it'll be something that happens in the next few years or is that like way out? Well, it's already happening. Siri is based on machine learning, right? Yeah. So in certain domains, it's in production and it has great results. Uh, the problem with machine learning as such, as I see it, is that you need huge, well-labeled data sets. Yeah. So you, you either need a small domain and then you go do adversarial learning, like you get from zero to uh, grandmaster in chess in 30 minutes with enough CPU power, because the domain is well-defined. Machine learning is great for that. If you say, well, figure out what's wrong with my network. Well, where, where's my learning set? How do I know that what is currently in my network is okay? And I was once listening to a presentation of uh, a lady working at one of those, uh, you know, all these big vendors have their security departments and they're collecting samples from all over the world. And there's machine learning on top of that and artificial yep. intelligence. And we got threat intelligence out of that. And she was like, you know what, guys? Most of the hard stuff is hard coded by humans. Oh, well, that's funny. Yeah. We are analyzing the unknown samples and we are figuring out what's going on. And then we code stuff to recognize the new stuff. So you think in networking, that's long time, if ever? Well, you see, there are certain things where decision trees are very helpful, like low level troubleshooting, like the thing that never worked on Windows, like troubleshoot my internet connection that yeah. never gave me useful results. But Honestly, if uh, you take a look at what a level one tech is, technical support is doing, it's scripted decision tree. Yeah, it's a good point. So it's just a human following a tree and then... You, I mean, yeah, and if a human can follow a tree and if the tree is well-defined, maybe a computer can follow the tree. So if you let the computer follow the tree and log into all your boxes and do the various show commands and analyze the printouts and then maybe you can do some simple anom anomaly detection on top of that. That's all extremely useful. But, you know, present a machine learning thingy with a never before seen networking problem and expect it to solve it. Good luck. So you don't think machine learning is going to take or AI is going to take jobs away in the next five to 10 years, yeah? Well, you know, every time we get new technology, it takes jobs away. Just ask weavers. Supposedly they were breaking up machines in the 18th century because they were taking jobs away or something. So Good I've point. heard. Yep. So yeah, uh, CLI jockeys will disappear. VLAN masters will disappear. People troubleshooting uh, internet connections for grandmas will disappear. But on the other hand, uh, that has been happening for the last 300 years. Do you have this, uh, this feeling that we ran out of jobs? I agree with you. It's, it's, it sounds like you just have to adapt. Yeah, I mean, we got from half a billion to 10 billions or something, and we still have jobs. Yep, good point. So now, uh, yeah, the repeatable jobs will go away intelligent jobs, not for a long time. So if I'm a person who does anything repetitive, like you said, like create VLAN, stuff like that, I really need to worry, yeah? Yeah. Like that telephony person that, you know, patched the cables. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So think about whether you are adding any value and whether you are gaining any experience in your job. Because honestly, if you're configuring VLANs all day long, do, are you gaining any experience? Are well, you no. learning to type? You're learning to type, great. Yeah. That helps you if your next job is a secretary. 
<laughs> until Siri comes along. Good point. Uh, so if you're not learning anything new, if you're not gaining any experience, if what you're doing can be described as a decision tree, that job will be gone in a few years. No question about that. So find a job where you're learning, where you're gaining new experience. And if you can't find that job in your current company, start polishing your resume, go to networking events, look around, find someone, persuade him that the value you could bring to the table is good enough for him to create the job opening for you. I like that. So you're not just chasing jobs, you trying to get a job that suits you. Yeah, you have to have job created for you. Yeah, but that means you, you've got to have unique skills. Well, not necessarily, because you know, very few people are in the top 001% of whatever. But if you have good skills in like four different things, and it's a rare combination of four different things, then you're probably unique. That's a good point. You're a decent networking engineer. You know how to make presentations. Your presentations look good and you have presentation skills. How many people you know that fit the description? No, I agree with you. I mean, 100%. So just on those, that, you just gave three skills there and that's even yeah. that's hard to get, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, you don't need cookies because you can fingerprint the browsers. Just looking at, uh, with JavaScript, you can almost uniquely identify the visitor. Just by looking at the user agent, all the plugins installed, screen resolution, all that. Collect 10 pieces of information, you have fingerprinted your client. Which means that if you have five unique skills, and they're not the same skills that everyone else is having, you're probably pretty unique. So I'm going to push you because it's uh, I like to do this. So you, you mentioned like being able to present, like talk in front of an audience, yeah? Create yeah. PowerPoint presentations, have an understanding of networking. Is no, anything no, I else... said create, create decent looking PowerPoint presentations. That's a different story. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> anything else you think we should, like you mentioned cloud as a big skill. Anything yeah. else you, you'd want to add to that? Um, well, it could be anything. It could be people skills, like you are really good at getting a job done. You're really good at motivating people to get the job done. You're really good at listening to people. You're really good at figuring out what the actual problem is, not what the server people are telling you, like, we need stretch VLAN. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> uh, on the technical side, it could be programming. It could be website design. It could be uh, building up static websites. It could be, I don't know. Linux skills, DNS skills, database skills, whatever. Just make sure that you are different from the guy sitting left and right of you. I like, I like what you said there. I mean, rather than trying to get everyone to become the same person, you're saying be unique, yeah? Yeah. I mean, eventually, you know, in your organization, they will need a website. Maybe you are the guy who can do that. Maybe, you know, the networking team needs reports and those reports, everything is collected. They just need the reports to be written. The data is there and no one knows how to turn those Excel spreadsheets into PDF. I mean, that's honestly a problem for some organizations. Yeah, I mean, I think it's amazing what, what big companies struggle with sometimes. Yeah. Like, how do you create PDFs? Did you know that there is this open source thingy that can turn HTML into PDF? No, really? <laughs> what, what's your opinion about learning open source stuff? I think you're a big advocate for that kind of thing. Is that right? Uh, well, um, I, I'm always a big advocate of uh, knowing as many tools as possible. Yeah. You know, if you're a woodworker, do you only work with a saw or do you have a saw and a hammer and a chisel and, you know, a router and a CNC machine? 
<laughs> you know, you get the idea. Yeah. The more tools you know, the easier it will be to select the right tool for the job. Y you mean a hammer imagine, doesn't work? Imagine, yeah, imagine you're a woodworker and the only tool you, you know is a hammer. Yeah. And you, ha you have this two by four and you have to split it in half. Eventually, it works with a hammer, I was told. <laughs> <laughs> the results are suboptimal sometimes. So, yeah. And the beauty of, well, there are two beauties of typical open source tools. At least to play with them, it's free. And if the documentation sucks, you can always look at the code. Yeah. Which, you know, is sometimes so frustrating with uh, closed source tools because they don't work the way they're documented to be working. And you can't figure out why they don't work that way. And there is absolutely no way to figure out what's going on behind the scenes because you can't look at the source code. Yeah. I'm not talking about, you know, looking at the source code of free range routing. That would be way beyond me. <laughs> but simple tools written in Python and like a few hundred lines of Python code, you should be able to look into that and figure out why it's broken. Like maybe an Ansible module comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love Ansible. Oh yeah, I do. So I have a you... very special relationship with Ansible. <laughs> you have a question? Do you have time for another question? Sure. <laughs> 